Welcome back. It's still the breakfast and plus CV Africa. We set for our first major uh, conversation this morning on the beginning of the campaigning season as far as uh, the 2023 elections in Nigeria is concerned. Well, as the campaigning commences today, the uh, Independent National Electoral Commission has warned that a political message or slogan must not be tainted with abusive language directly or indirectly likely to injure religious, ethnic, tribal or sectional feelings. Anak has also said abusive, uh, inter intemperate, uh, slanderous or uh, base language or innuendos designed or likely to provoke violent reactions or emotions shall not be employed or used in political campaigns. Now, this is coming from the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Nigeria's Electoral Empire, uh, Mahmoud Yakubu, who threw uh, that caution at a two-day capacity building workshop uh, for the INEC Press Corps members. These are journalists who cover INEC and who work with INEC on critical issues in the Electoral Act 2022 and the Commission's processes, the innovations, preparations of the Commission for the 2023 general election. This took place in Abuja yesterday. Uh, Yakubu reminded the media of their constitutional and legal obligations are saying that uh, uh, state apparatus, including the media, shall not be employed to the advantage of any political party or candidate and any election. I'm just laughing at that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the annex chairman also urged all 18 registered political parties to uh, critically study and pay attention to, you know, the provisions of the Nigerian constitution and um, the Electoral Act, the Police Act, the Public Order Act, and for the proper and peaceful conduct of political campaigns, rallies, and processions. Now, what are we to expect as the campaign officially kicks off? I'm glad to say joining us to discuss this is Mukhtar Mohammed, who is a developmental economist. Mukhtar, nice to have you back after some time. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to be on your program. Good morning. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I laughed <laughs> while, you know, uh, giving a background to the story. Uh, this discussion when I next said, you know, state owned media apparatus are not to be used to the advantage of one political party. We both know that's not the case. So, I mean, it's been happening over the years, at least since the return to democracy in 1999. Let's start from there. So, I mean, is INEC really, do you think they mean what they say? Are they a bulldog that has tooth or teeth, rather? Well, yeah. Again, I say good morning. Ordinarily, they, are, they should be a bulldog that has a teeth. But unfortunately, um, most of the state media, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the state media are controlled by state governors. And sometimes the opposition parties even go to give their own campaign slogans and they are not accepted by the state-owned media. I mean, I particular about state-owned media because if you talk about a private media like yours, you always have a balancing of, of in terms of political campaigns. And uh, it's you people that the NBC comes after. They don't go after the state media because they are controlled by the state governors. So definitely, um, I wish I had have those power to do what they say they would do. Unfortunately, I don't think they have. They, they know what to do, but unfortunately, um, sometimes uh, they don't just wield that big stick even when you when you complain about it. Okay, so, I mean, let's also get to the part where we talk about what should be the expectations. Uh, we have everyone involved in the entire process. You have the electorates. You also have those who are vying for political offices or offers. Uh, what do you think should be the expectation? Mm -hmm. Ordinary, you know, when it comes to this, they, they, those vying for political offices tend to be the one that set the tune for the electorate. Uh, we've seen that over, over and over. If they are very, if they are, um, they are civil in their behavior, the electorate tend to be civil. But if some of them make violent co um, comments, it tends to turn violent. Uh, and sometimes these comments, you don't see the repercussion during the election processes. You see the repercussion maybe during the time of results are beginning to troop in and you have told them that, look, this is what is going to happen. If it doesn't happen, this is what we are going to do. We saw that play out. Um, in, 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 in uh, I mean, it's um, sometime in 20, I, I mean, if the election before the 2015 election, where there was violent protests, in, especially in the north, and where some coppers and some people were killed. So we, we must, must not forget that, that in, they, they all start with the politicians, and the way they address their, their followers definitely determine the tone of events turning out. So hopefully, 
we are we are now a developed um, uh, democracy now this will be um, we have evolved from moving from uh, one civilian regime to another civilian regime we have moved from one party to another party we have even moved from a sitting president being off seat and and then we have a new president and a new party so hopefully we think i think we are growing in in leaps and bounds um with with last the 2015 election we did not see so much of violence and there were um, um, scales of violence left and right, but it was not. Um, and so we expect that they will, they will not be violent this time because we feel that we are improving by the day. But, but just before Kofi comes in, I mean, we always talk about uh, th th this is the campaign. It's a season where, uh, you know, you have various political parties going out to canvas for votes. It's like you have to market yourself and what you're selling. W what are the issues that, you know, this party's polit political party should be looking out for? And what are the electorate at the end of the day should be looking out for? I think this time the, the electorate should be more, um, we, we should be more wise um, because the political parties, I would have said we would have looked at the ideologies. If you, if you, if you are campaigning the developed economy, let me give an example of the, of the most developed um, democracy, the United States democracy. If you, if you know what to expect from Republican, you know what to expect from Democrats. But unfortunately, we don't have that uh, politics of ideology where we know, okay, if, APC comes this what we expect, PDP comes this what we expect, Labour Party comes this what we expect, AGAP comes this what we, we expect. Unfortunately, we don't have that because we see um, they, they tend to tell the electorate what the electorate wants to hear without even giving them a roadmap. For me, I think um, lack of ideology, they seem to tell us all the right thing without giving us the roadmap on how to achieve it. So if I want to have advice for the electorate is listen to them very carefully what is the roadmap? You can't just tell us you give us power. You and you expect us to be there. How are you going to give us power? What are the strategy that you are going to give us power? You want to you are you you, you tell the electorate that you are going to build more roads for them. Uh, how are you going to build the road? Where are the funds, especially in, a, in in an economy like this? How are you going to mobilize funds? Those are critical questions that the electorate tend to ask. Should be asking the the politicians or those that are fine for elected people. Unfortunately, again, um, you go to political diary, it becomes a place for jamboree. They just come bring musicians. Everybody sing and say, oh, you have won. Nobody seems to come up with anything uh, after the, uh, they, 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 so I think the electorate should be wise this time to ask the politicians what they want to, especially now. We know our problem. We know we lack infrastructure. We know we lack power. We know there's hunger in the land. How are you going to address the issue? We know there is um, our 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 the exchange rate to the naira to the dollar has gone the high. How are we going to do that? We know that there may come recession. How are you going to address recession? Are you going to remove first subsidy? If you remove subsidy, where are you going to put them? We need to be. We need to. We we need to 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 to, to rub minds with them. And let's see a politician that will come and tell us the right. Remember. 2015, before now, we had the electorate telling us, look, uh, uh, first, 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 first subsidy will go and that and that. And at the end of the day, it never went. Today, we are here. We say we have power 24 hours. Up to this moment, we are still struggling to provide power. There's always collapse with the national grid. So we should be intentional this time in asking them, how are you going to do it? We are tired of you telling us, you know, they generally know what the problems of Nigerians are. And again, the electorate should not go and collect bag of rice and these and put their campaign name on, on it. And put, I mean, it's time we begin to look at a, 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 a policy driven uh, campaign, campaign that is not void of, um, is void of um, hatred. It's a campaign that is driven by value. What am I coming to add to the people? All right, uh, Mukhtar, interesting thoughts there. <laughs> um, I, I, I ask again, I ask again, is INEC a toothless bulldog? I mean, when we see Mamori Yakubu saying these things, does he mean them? And will the political parties be convinced and be uh, uh, you know, willing to take his words seriously? Why I'm asking this is because we have seen over the past few weeks and months that Candidates and their supporters, um, some, I don't want to commit a fallacy, some candidates and their supporters have engaged in campaigns before 28th of September. I don't know if you're going to nod your head in agreement. Is it attending fora where they are meant to speak about, you know, their, their present themselves to professional bodies like NBA, 
the LCCI, that's the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Niger, you know, Nigeria Bar Association, etc. They've campaigned. Should we look at the billboards springing around left, right, and center? In fact, some political parties were fighting or supporters are fighting government and, you know, regarding their own billboards, saying they're not being allowed to put billboards around the country. And these billboards have the logo of the parties. These billboards have the picture of the candidates. And these billboards have the slogan of the election in the year 2023. They even have votes. You know, I know some candidates, like um, I think I've seen the APC presidential candidate put his face, they put his face on billboard, but they just wrote uh, Emi Loco. I don't know if that qualifies as a campaign. That was what they put there, near the Third Milan Bridge, near uh, the axis of the University of Lagos. But some candidates have had their party, you know, you know uh, uh, insignia. So what do you say to that? And then also talk about it as it concerns INEX seriousness in ensuring that the rules are adhered to. Yeah, let me start with, uh, you know, remember that some of these billboards you are seeing, sometimes most of them were talking about when they were vying to be elected by their parties. That's what they will tell you, that some of these billboards were, were erected when they were doing their own primaries. They had to campaign to their delegate to vote for them. That's when some of these billboards were erected. And after some time, after the... Um, some of them won, they refused to remove those billboards. But I can assure you that in some, in some, in starting from today, you see some of these billboards being replaced with the Ray candidate billboards. Now, you need to understand the Nigerian contest and when we talk about campaign. In Nigerian contest, placing of poster, placing of billboard is not campaign. That's the, in the Nigerian contest. Huh? You talk about the Nigerian Bar Association, that should be the chief, the, the most, um, uh, the, the, the highest legal body, the, 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 the body with the highest gathering of legal minds. They are the ones that hosted them and tell them, come and tell us what your manifesto is. What do you want? So you, you, so if you look at it from that angle, you realize that when you talk about campaign, Nigeria, the time they tell you started campaigns, when we gather together, when we see them come to talk to us, when we have that jumbory, when we are in the stadium. Where, I mean, I had one of the presidential party spokesmen um, just uh, this morning tweeting that we just opened our campaign office in, in, in Katsina. Look at the number of people that that, that gathered for the opening of our campaign office. That is the way the Nigerian politician doesn't say campaign as um, um, the same start of campaigns where we have the gathering of people, yeah, we begin to say what our manifestos some, some, are. Some parties or some of their supporters actually have the, the, the presidential candidate, his running mate, the slogan of the campaign, the, uh, the, uh, the insignia or the logo of the party, and then something about voting for this person in 2023 on billboards in certain parts of the country. This is not, not about yes. primary. It's about... No, it's, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's there. That's what I'm saying. It's there. But I've just told you that sometimes billboard for them, billboard is not campaign. But campaign it, is when you it, gather to them you, together. To you, is it campaign? <laughs> it's what I want to know. It's campaign, definitely. And to okay. INEC, it should be campaign. Okay, but the only, the only time INEC will the big stick, if you, want, if you understand that, I net only will the beast sticks when they realize that the court has given a pronouncement. The day one political party now takes one other political party to court and said you have infringed on the electoral act, then the court gives a judgment. I net things to act. You have not seen I net unilaterally act. They will tell you oh, we are waiting for court judgment. So I think if you look at that from that angle, then you see that I net, uh, is is, bo is is toothless. If you look at that from that angle. They wait for the judiciary to give them the power to 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 judge. Have you seen any take any electorate to I mean any political party and even to court that you have infringed on that right? They never do that. They always wait for the political party or the politician to take themselves to court and then uh, tend to be the ones that implement the judgment in some instant. And in some instant, they will tell you, look, we have to wait. Um, there's an appeal and that. So definitely, if you look at it from that perspective, I don't think INEC has had the power because indeed we call them Independence Electoral Commission. But you mustn't forget that they still depend from funding from the government. And the government in power could decide <laughs> are the ones that are, 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 I mean, that even put some of the INEC commissioners or directors in those positions so definitely sometimes their loyalty is tweeted and you you've seen incident where somebody was a commissioner for for INEC in a particular state then he goes to his own state and said i want to have resigned from INEC i am now want i want to campaign i want to become a, a, a representative of a political party you're not talking about years you're talking about months just months after 
So definitely, you should know that um, we are still in a learning democracy, and uh, we've not seen any, uh, even even in the use of words, even the use of words, violence and everything. Political parties are supposed to be to, to be to be punished. Even their funding up to this moment. They don't come out to INEC is supposed to edit their funding. It's supposed to publish name of people that have given this political party funds. How are they getting their funds? But up to this moment, since the inception of INEC, whether um, Atairu Jiga or um, um, Mahmoud, they have never been a publication of this is how the political uh, political party were funded during this election. Well, um, uh, let's move away from you know that particular one now. Uh, let's just see, look at it now. If you talk about slogans and conversations not uh, being ethnic or tribal, you find out that the social media space uh, gives all of that leverage, really, especially if you go on Twitter. So um, how can these things be? Really, we know that at some point the government was big on saying we need to put a control or regulate the social media space. Uh, there was a ban on Twitter. Have uh, however, it was lifted prior to the elections. Uh, so my question is, how can these things really be? How can uh, INEC and every other person, stakeholders involved, control the space of conversation or campaign, especially when it's on social media? INEC, um, that's INEC. INEC, um, if it's, I think it's for INEC to do that because um, in developed uh, uh, economies, when those things happen, it's either INEC write to Twitter to say, look, this comment is offensive and we need it removed. And I think they've done that. If you look at the presidential election in, in the United States of America, it came in time that they, even one of the presidential aspirants was removed from Twitter because they felt that most, even from Twitter, from on social media network, because they felt that um, he was infringing on, 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 I mean, his campaign were violent. And so um, they, it, it was, it was, it was it, it, I mean, he was removed. But again, that has to do with the security. And again, unfortunately for Nigeria, the security apparatus cannot be said to be um, devolved, taking sides. You you see, I keep saying, you see at the end of this, a, 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 a former chief of army staff, all of a sudden, he is retired, and now is now also a, 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 a governorship aspirant in the state, or is now an ambassador being appointed by the political party. So you, you realize that um, it's very, very difficult for us to um, um, put our political differences aside. About ethnic ethnicity is part of Niger um, Nigerian electorate because even when the electorate are not thinking ethnicity, the politicians are telling us you are doing this because we are the only thing I tell uh, electorate is that why is it that the politicians are quick to point to us when it comes to our tribal or our religious background, but when it comes to them being perpetuating corrupt tendency. They tend to come together. They don't think whether you're a Muslim, they don't think whether you're a Christian, they don't think whether, whether you're from one ethnic group. You will see that in a particular corrupt case, you will see that various ethnic groups will be represented in those cases. It's either somebody that funded it, it's somebody that collected the money, it's somebody that initiated it, it's somebody that runs the company. They are not all from the same ethnic group. So, the politicians tend to take advantage of us, and unfortunately, because of lack of education in the part of the electorate, we don't seems to um, 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 know where these people are coming from. When you talk about power shift, when you see them shouting about power shift, it's when their own power is not, the power is not going to shift to them. They have seen it all over. It's not coming to them. They begin to use ethnicity. Sometimes they use religious. That is not that, that is not to say that I support whereby we don't have balance in terms of, okay, maybe it's supposed to be but, but Muslim, just quickly Muslim, now, Muktak, uh, what should be the, the, you know, the focus, the content of campaign for political parties? Right? What should he be about? It should be about it should be about issues. It should be it should be driven by it should be driven by issues. Issues that have to deal with the economy, issues that have to deal with education, issues that have to do with infrastructure. That should be what the, the that should be their, their 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 focal point. They shouldn't come and begin to tell us somebody is going to he, he said he's not entering private jet. All of a sudden we are seeing him coming down for a private jet. That is not the issue. You you shouldn't come and be telling us that uh, uh, um, um, the religious leader should to think about salvation. That is not the issue. The issue is. What are you going to do? 
What are you planning to do? Why are you going to bring all Nigerians together since we are divided around religious and you have uh, your religion space and you have identified it? What are you going to bring it together? If I mean, a, a lot of things should be issue driven, not based on um, 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 it, petty things like the clothes you wear or the shoe you wear or the car you drive or the airplane you drive to a campaign venue or who you are meeting. I, I think a campaign should be issue driven, not petty driven. Um, I, I would like to speak about the role of media in all of this, because because media is uh, it's going to be a playing field. <laughs> it's where the campaign, most of the campaigning, will take place. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on the role the media has played in previous campaigning seasons or periods? Because uh, it's very critical. Whilst the INEC uh, uh, chairman is saying that political parties should be aware of the electoral act of the provisions of the constitution regarding campaigning, and of course of the police act. Etc. You know, um, I think that the media needs to be aware of these as well, and that we play a critical role. Do you agree with this? And what can you say about the role the media has played over the years? Has the media helped? You know, the situation or made it worse? What do you think the media should take away from all that the INEC chair is saying? I think the media should be the ones that should be uh, um, uh, um, being like being the watchdog for the electorate. Because when you're talking about media, we're talking about both social media, we're talking about your electronic media, we're talking about the print media. Like you have said during your introduction, you realize that when it comes to the electronic media, even in the private private media, like private media, there are particular private media that are driven towards the political parties, whether they are for PDP or they are for APC. There are particular media that are driven towards that. If it comes to the print media, also we see. But when it comes to the state-owned media, we definitely know the sitting governor have power over there. So the media, unfortunately, the media has a big role to play, and unfortunately, they are not playing that role. Especially the state media that have seems to have larger coverages into the rural area, or um, um, the private media have been the only one that are being real the big stick anytime issues like that comes up. You see that the, even the federal government, national own media, sometimes tend to take sides with the federal government and all with a particular political party that is in power, and nobody seems to wield the big stick on them. So for me, I think. Um, it, it has been a divide and rule, or what we, we call some untouchable, some untouchable. So if the media are able to, to, I mean, they clamp down on when you have done something wrong, when you have gone against the electoral act, then we'll begin to see a little bit of sanity. But I can say that in that little space, the media have been able, especially the private media, like your own organization and other private media organizations, have tried, even in a difficult situation, to be very neutral. Because they are the ones that will bring you both parties, both representative of any party, and want to say, what are you bringing to the table? But the state-owned media, you don't see that play out. So for me, I think if we want to give a kudos, we just need to give it to the private media um, for doing what they have to do, even in a very difficult situation. Sometimes when they go against some of these um, uh, 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 the, the party in power, the NBC seems to claim down on them, and when the state media goes, they turn a blind eye towards what they are doing. So I think uh, we, should, we should say the private media have done very well. They can do more if their business is not threatened. You know, for every business, private media is all about business. When my business is threatened, I tend to look at my investment. And I knowing that uh, the, the government is very powerful, you revoke my license, I will tend to be cautious in what I do. But if they are given a level playing field and they realize that, look, it's a level playing field, Anybody that goes against the law will be punished. I'm sure, I'm very, very sure the Nigerian media will be in the forefront for us to begin to enjoy the dividend of democracy. Yeah. Because you are the people yeah. that have the recording of these people. Yeah. When they say they will do this, they will do that. So you'll be able to bring it out. You promise us this, you promise us this. But you didn't do it because you have it recorded. But unfortunately, I, I, I don't envy where you people sit. It's a very difficult city you are sitting yeah. in. Talk, talk, talking about the role of the media... Um, we have we have a situation. I would say we have three kinds of candidate when it talk, we talk about the media. You have those who've been doing interviews left, right, and center. We have those who are looking for an opportunity to have media interviews so they can talk about national issues. Because when it's not campaign period, we invite them to talk about national issues. And then we have those who the media is looking for but are not nowhere to be found and not accessible or available for media interviews. Yeah. I can give you an example. No, they are accessible to their spokesman. Well, yes, that, that, that you're right. You're saying it. You know, I can give you an example. I think Atiku Abubakar has given just one interview. 
uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is with uh, uh, one of the TV stations in the country. And that was even conducted at his home, in the comfort of his home or somewhere. Uh, uh, Bola Metinubu hasn't, hadn't, I've not seen any interviews so far. And uh, Peter Obi has been here, there, and everywhere. You have the rest who are looking, Oshore has also been around, but you have the rest who are looking for that opportunity, who are even accusing you know, other parties of not inviting them. So I wanted to talk about this and also quickly talk about the debating where um, some candidates refuse to attend debates. Just quickly, please, because we're out of time. Okay, definitely. I think those people are using the they are using the social media space. And if you look at what you have just said, you look at we are still dealing with the old breed politicians. They are shying away from interviews. They are shying away. As I said, the media have a very big role to play. It comes on issues. And these two part, these two candidates, actually, Wajibola Tinubu and um, Atiku Abubakar, have been using their spokesman. I think their spokesman have been more vocal than them. They have been all over the space, social media space, broadcasting houses. They've granted interviews. Uh, but the only presidential a candidate that has gone from I can say that gone from one media house to another, even going to global media house, is the Labour Party candidate and Peter Obi. And you know why he's doing that because the youth are seem to be pushing. The youth are seem to be the vanguard of that of that movement and seem to say, "Look, we need to hear from you. We need to push you to this space. People need to know what you are bringing to the table because we are trying to change the, the old guard." For those that have not been given the opportunity, I think they should they, they have the, the social media handles to 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 work on 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 that. That's what what I I feel. So for the for the debate, I think debate is not mandatory, and that's um, that's unfortunately I has not make debate mandatory. So you choose to attend or you choose not to attend, and we've seen people not come for debate and win selection. Let me tell you the truth I've seen about debate. Once you are the popular candidate, you have men on ground, you don't tend to come to debate. But when you are very unpopular, you want to come to debate to tell us what you want to do. So that's for me, that's how the right. debate well, is. Mokhtar, and I still we have to go now. I, I, I wish we could continue this conversation, but we're in the season and this conversation will not end until 2023. And it will definitely continue. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. It's a pleasure. Good morning again. All right, Muktak Mohammed is a developmental economist and he's been uh, talking about our expectations as the campaigns begin today. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll continue with the next conversation. Stay with us.